Let's learn about the discriminant and the quadratic formula. Brace yourself, the quadratic formula is upon us. On our agenda, we're going to find the discriminant, talk about what the discriminant tells us, we'll learn the quadratic formula, when will it work, how do I use it, and then we'll use it to solve quadratic equations. Let's get ready, you're gonna need pencil, notes, and a calculator, and you wanna make sure you write down the formulas, the discriminant and the quadratic formula as you see them. So remember standard form when we were factoring. So in order to solve a quadratic, we want it to be in standard form. So we want our highest exponent first. It's going to be an x squared if it's a quadratic, and then x to the 1, and then our constant. The discriminant, and I'm going to use the capital D for discriminant, is b squared minus 4ac. You should write that down into your notes. So we're going to try these examples, and before we do, I just want you to take a look at the three equations. They're all in standard form. They're all set equal to zero. Um, they start with x squared minus 6x, and then it's that last number. It's that c value that's a little bit different. I purposely put them, this, them together on the screen so we can look and investigate and notice. So I'm going to find the discriminant of example one. So I'm going to write down b squared minus 4ac. Note that a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 5. So it's a matter of pulling a, b, and c out from there and then plugging in. So b squared. Be careful, use parentheses, especially if you're going to do this on your calculator, because you're plugging it in and then squaring it. Minus 4 times a is 1, times c is 5. Remember, of order of operations, you're going to do your exponent first. So d equals negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. This last term is all multiplication, so I'm going to multiply 4 times 5, and I have 20. So I get a discriminant that is 16. Now, that doesn't mean too much to us. We'll see what happens in a little bit. I'm going to try it again with example 2. a equals 1, b is negative 6, and c is 9. My discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. I definitely recommend writing the letters out first as we're starting to learn this. So my discriminant is, again, parentheses 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9. So d equals 36 minus 36. So my discriminant here is 0. And on example 3, a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is a positive 13. Write out my formula and substitute in my values. Negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13. d equals 36 minus 4 times 13 is 52. And here, d equals negative 16. So I have some different looking answers. Positive 16 is 0 and a negative 16. So let's take a look at what happens once we graph these. If I'm going to graph them, I'm going to set them equal to y. So same equations. I took away the 0, set them equal to y. We've already spent some time on graphing, so I just went to Desmos and graphed them. You can see my first example. We have our y-intercept is 5, so we're going through 5. Then look at the example 2. My y-intercept is 9, so my graph is like slowly shifting up, and my y-intercept on my last one is 13. It also affects where my vertex is, so I can see my vertex is sort of rising there. But here are the numbers we got. We got d equals 16, d equals 0, and d equals negative 16. And we want to see if we can come up with some sort of um, relationship between those. So with my first example, I have two x-intercepts. So we would say that this one has two solutions. On example two, I have one x-intercept, so this one has one solution. And on the last one, I do not cross the x-axis at all, so this has zero solutions. So if we take a look at the number itself for the discriminant, and we compare it to zero, if it's going to be positive, like the first one, I'm going to have two solutions. If it actually equals zero, I'm going to have one solution. And if it's less than zero, 
I'm going to have no real solutions. Recap, if the discriminant is bigger than zero, you'll have two real solutions. If the discriminant equals zero, then you're going to have one real solution. And if the discriminant is negative or less than zero, it's going to have zero real solutions. So just by knowing that part b squared minus 4ac, you'll know how many answers you're, you should find. So recapping here, the discriminant tells you how many you have. It also tells you the type. If you notice, I wrote the word real, and th those are the numbers we know so far. We'll have two real, one real, zero real, but if we have zero real, then we're gonna end up having two complex. That will be another lesson for us. Let's switch over to the quadratic formula. This is the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. What do you notice? Well, I'm hoping you'll notice this piece because that's the piece we just did. That is our discriminant. So the piece that we were calculating is part of the quadratic formula. So if you can get that order of operations good, then you should be okay with simplifying the quadratic formula. That is where you should start when you start to simplify this. Maybe another thing that you notice is this piece here, negative b over 2a. That helped us find the x of the vertex. It was also the axis of symmetry. So we've seen pieces of this before, and we've even seen the plus or minus when we were solving with square roots and giving us our two answers. So those are all going to be very important. Another thing I want to point out is, just like the axis of symmetry equation, it does have a negative b to start. So we have to remember that that's part of the formula. Don't drop your plus and minus and squish that b together and make it multiplication. We want to come up with two answers, so we need that plus or minus. And definitely don't drop your denominator. We get so worked on looking at the numerator, we might drop the denominator. So with the quadratic formula, the good news is it will always work. No matter the equation, you can use the quadratic formula. You should put it in standard form first to make sure it's set equal to zero. And remember what it's doing. It's solving for x-intercepts. You do need to remember the plus minus because that will give you more than one answer. Don't drop the denominator. Plug your values in and then do order of operations. And remember, a number squared is positive, and that's this piece here. So whether b is positive or negative, that first number under your square root, it should be positive. So let's go back and try the examples we did earlier with the discriminant. So I'm gonna identify a is one, b is six, oops, sorry negative 6, and c is 5. I'm going to write out my formula, especially when I'm learning it, and say it to yourself. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And now I'm going to plug in. Negative b, but b is already negative, so technically it's a negative negative 6 plus or minus the square root, put that negative 6 in parentheses when we're squaring it, minus four, a is one, c is five, all over two times my a value, which is one. Now think about order of operations. I'm gonna start with my discriminant underneath. So I'm gonna also simplify up the six. So negative, negative really means positive six. And then we have 36 minus 20, all over two, x equals six, plus or minus the square root of 16, all over two, we're going to keep going because the square root of 16 is a perfect square. So six plus or minus four all over two. We've seen that plus or minus before when we were solving with our square root, so I'm going to do this twice. X equals six plus four for 10 over two, so X is five. X equals six minus four, which is two divided by two, and X equals one. So we've seen the discriminant before at 16. It's positive. It tells me I'm going to have two real answers. We continue on with the quadratic formula to actually find out what those answers are. Here we have the different equation. So a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is now 9. Write out your letters, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, and then substitute in your values, a negative, negative 6, plus or minus parentheses negative six squared minus four times one times nine all over two times one. So x equals a positive six plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 36 all over two. 
So x equals 6 plus or minus 0 over 2. We already did this discriminant. We already saw when it equaled 0. So now maybe it makes sense to you why we would only have one answer when the discriminant is 0, because the plus minus 0 doesn't really affect anything. So x is going to be 6 halves, which we can then say is 3. This one only has one solution because my dis discriminant equaled 0. And on this last one, if you remember, we said the discriminant was negative. We're going to have 0 real solutions. So let's see what happens. A is 1, B is negative 6, and C is 13. So x equals negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. X equals a negative negative 6 plus or minus negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13, 2 times 1. So x equals a positive 6 plus or minus 36, and then that is 52, so minus 52 equals 2. So we end up with x equals 6 plus or minus a negative square root of 16 all over 2. I'm going to put dot, dot, dot to be continued. We would say this has 0 real because of that negative under the square root, but in a, a few lessons we'll learn how we can deal with that negative under the square root. To recap the discriminant and the quadratic formula, both of these should be in your notes. The discriminant tells us how many solutions. The quadratic formula solves for it. So the quadratic formula will always work, but it has to be in standard form set to 0. It solves for your x-intercepts. Remember your plus or minus. Don't drop that denominator. Plug in your values. Do order of operations. And remember a number squared, b squared, is always positive. Nice work.